Hello everyone, I hope that you are all doing well. This is me, Sayyar Shujatullah. Welcome to Achievers Academy. Today, we will be discussing about the Telangana Economic Survey 2022, Chapter Number 4, that is Agriculture and Allied Activities. Though we are in January 28, 2023, I just wanted to tell all of you that in this particular chapter, don't think that it is a previous survey. Because I have already told you many times in my lectures that minimum 4 to 5 years of survey you have to remember for your examination. And those who are going to write the group 1 examination, for them 2022 survey is the latest one you can expect because when 2023 will be released, there will be hardly enough time for them to even see that particular values. Only values will change, the things will always remain static. And those students who are thinking that 2023 will be the main uh, important uh, survey, it is absolutely wrong. Four to five years of survey is important. And, okay, agriculture, industry, service and Telangana related, how much data you can accumulate, that much data is important for your examination. Okay, and in this particular video, we are going to discuss enormously with regard to agriculture and, and allied activities. We are going to discuss about the allied sectors also like sericulture, pisciculture, horticulture, okay, animal husbandry, livestock and uh, schemes, right to bandhu, right to bhima, okay, 24 into 7, electric power, poly houses, green houses, okay, the production, the major crops of Telangana, the, uh, the crops which contribute highest value to the agriculture, GSVA, so and so forth and number of data is there very good factual information is there in this particular survey what is the ranking of telangana with regard to sheep population goat population all that is completely immersed into this particular survey so stay tuned don't go anywhere have the benefit of what actually we are giving to you right okay let us go ahead chapter number four we are going to discuss some factoids and definitions are very important in agriculture sector. The, the population percentage of Telangana, depending on agriculture sector, is 48.4%. Very, very, very buoyant data. This is according to Periodic Labor Force Survey 2019 to 20. Agriculture dependence in Telangana is 48.4%. And uh, in this particular survey, they have given the importance of agriculture household. What is the agriculture house? Listen to me, all of you. See to me very carefully. If in your family, if in your family, fam generally in economics, family is uh, three children and husband and wife. Okay. So, five members in a house is called as family or household in our economy. So, out of five members, if one adult, at least one adult member is... Uh, one adult member is continuously dependent okay, on agriculture sector for 365 days. It means one person is continuously engaged in agriculture sector or allied sector for 365 days. Then that family is called as agriculture household. My family is not called as agriculture household. Why? Because in my family, all of our five members, no one is dependent on agriculture and allied activities for 365 days, nobody is doing, I am teaching, my brother is in IT, my dad is somewhere working, my mother is housewife, uh, like no one is working in on agriculture sector of a 365 days. So, we are not an agriculture household, but at least one member is there, then it will be considered as a agriculture household, okay. And it has been like since the time of uh, Telangana formation till today, by 2023, you can say, the growth of primary sector has increased means agriculture sector has increased. You just see that the number of households, okay, in 2013, the agriculture households were only 51.5%. Out of the total households of Telangana, agriculture households are how much? 51.5% in 2013. By 2019, the agriculture household increased to 54.2%. What does it mean? Okay, when something is increasing, it means that Okay, suppose one automobile sector is there or tourism sector is there. The number of people depending on that sectors are increasing over a period of time. What does it mean? It means that the sector is performing well. The sector is giving you good income, good remuneration. That's why a lot of people are depending upon them, right or wrong? It means that if the dependency increased on a particular sector, it clearly shows that 
that sector is working very properly okay here you can see that 51% became 54% till 2019 it means agriculture has assumed more economic importance in the households common sense is irrigation mission ka kar diya rai tu bima rai tu bandhu 24 into 7 power supply sheep distribution go, buffalo distribution okay rai tu bandhu patakam is also there okay lot of subsidies are the given uh, farm mechanizations are also happened rai tu vedikas are there so government of telangana has taken lot of initiatives to develop our agriculture sector and to increase the income of the farmers from that occupation that is the reason the number of households are increasing budget allocation also increased my dear students it was just 6600 crores in 2016 budget allocation to the agriculture sector increased to 26000 crores so you can see that how much uh, uh, telangana government is spending on agriculture sector budget agriculture over the year agriculture got 13.5 percent growth rate in total expenditure in total revenue expenditure of telangana agriculture revenue expenditure accounts for 13.5 13.5 percent which is higher than the okay allocation for agriculture with regard to all india average is only 6.3 but we are doing 13.5 means agriculture allocation also we have double from 2016 to 2021 okay so if you see the gross value added in values 2014 agriculture was contributing 47700 crores by 2021 agriculture increased to its value increased to 84000 crores you can see that from 14 to till today since the time of state formation till today okay agriculture value doubled very very important and uh, if you see the last two years 18 19 agriculture gva contribution was 48000 crores 2019-20, 77,000 crores. So, this is the, from the state formation till today, this is the last two years. So, that's drastic increase happened, okay, with regard to uh, the, uh, like, drastic increase happened, means doubling of agriculture GSVA happened at current prices due to what lot of irrigation projects were initiated by government of Telangana. That's why more irrigation means more area will come under irrigation. More area will come under irrigation means more crops will be grown. More crops will be grown means more production will happen. More production will happen means more selling will happen. More selling will happen means automatically the crores will increase. So you can see that from 2014 to uh, 2014 to 2021, in all the years agriculture doubled. 41 became double is what 82. It becomes 84. It means it is more than 100 percent. That's why the growth rate is what one not three percent. If you see the sectoral, subsectoral contribution with regard to all sector, agriculture is 18.3%. In the total gross value added, agriculture is contributing 18.3%. Industry is contributing 20.4%. Service is contributing 16.61.3%. So here you see 4%, 3%, 3% is 100%. It will get ultimately you get 100%. Out of 100% our GSDP, Agriculture is contributing 18.3. Within agriculture, the sector which is contributing highest is livestock 49.7, followed by cropping 44.7, fishing 3.2, forestry and logging. So chronology is important and first two percentages are important. Please remember this point. Right. So between 2014 to till today in 2022, agriculture, forestry, livestock and fisheries over year on year, year on year, they have grown by 13.94%. This 13.94% is majorly driven by the growth in what livestock sector. So whatever the growth happened in agriculture sector, the growth rate was pushed mainly by livestock sector and livestock sector has recorded the growth rate of 18.2% in these years. Okay. The sector's contribution to GSVA of agriculture and allied activities has also improved from, okay, Agriculture sector was contributing only 38.47%. Now it is contributing 49.73% in 2021. Okay. Very, very important point. First, Madhya Pradesh is there in agriculture sector contribution with regard to the growth rate followed by Telangana. Okay. With regard to the annual average growth rate, year on year, year on year, the state which has shown Highest growth rate year on year, year on year from 2014 to 2021 is Madhya Pradesh and we are standing as second. 
ओके व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लैंड होल्डिंग्स माय डियर स्टूडेंट इट इज गिवन इन अवर इकोनॉमिक सर्वे ओनली सो दिस इज अ मार्जिनल होल्डिंग मींस एनीथिंग व्हिच इज लेस देन 2.47 हेक्टेयर्स ओके आई गेस इट इज एकर्स आई गेस नॉट हेक्टेयर्स इट इज एकर्स ओके please you can check in the economic survey whether it is a hectare or acres i am sure 99.999% it is acres only so marginal farmer means anyone who is having 2.47 of acres of land he is called as marginal farmer and the land holding is called as marginal land holdings in the same way small semi medium medium large is having how much large farmer is one which is who is having 24.78% of agricultural like acres of land okay if you see in all these holdings marginal holdings are highest means land fragmentation is more in our state okay and marginal farmers are highest which is accounting for 64.6 percentage okay that's why government generally helps marginal and small farmers only okay percentage of area operated highest in small holding okay this is again very important you might have known the concept of what is the meaning of operational holdings what is the meaning of land holdings so if you know this concept you will understand this point okay please watch the lectures you will understand it sc community is having more land agriculture land than st okay when you see the rainfall the governor in telangana the all the seasons are classified into four south west monsoon north east winter period hot weather period these are the uh, months in which these uh, monsoons are categorized and south west monsoon has generally gives 720 mm north east give 124.9 mm of water you can go through this telangana received around 1322 mm of rainfall in the last year and it is like excess like 46% excess we have got from the normal normal rainfall of telangana if they ask you in the mcq you know normal rainfall is 9 not 5.4 normal average rainfall means adding all these and taking the average by for adding all these and taking the average so you will get around what 99 not 5 is our normal rainfall in a year in telangana okay but in the last year we got 13 22 mm means 1322 it means we got excess rainfall than the normal how much excess they will ask you in the exam 46% if you see the now we have seen some okay we have seen some facts we have seen the budget allocation increase we have seen the gva uh, agriculture value contribution we have seen the agriculture uh, contribution to the overall G gdp we have also seen that chronological order of contribution of agriculture and allied activities so we have seen some facts we have seen land holdings we have seen rainfall now we'll go to zone area very very important please remember this very very carefully have a focus don't miss your focus see the top five major crops in telangana in vana kalam means in rainy season barish ke din mein rainy season vana kalam okay to so, yahan pe uh, in in the rainy season okay five major crops of telangana are paddy cotton maize red gram and soya bean are the five major crops okay now these five major crops okay are contributing around 90% 90% of total cropping area in our telangana means in telangana we are having this much area agriculture area is there means 90% of the area like this area is uh, the farmers are growing only these five crops okay and others are growing some other crops so these are the that's why they are called as five crops under the zone area zone area okay you can see that over a period of time okay if you see the latest one cotton is the crop which is grown which is sown highest very very important cotton is followed by paddy paddy is followed by you can see here soya bean then it is red gram then you are having what maize you are having what maize chronology is important and you can see that 22 became 18 then 20 23.2 26 31 37 you can see that paddy has okay steadily increased from the state formation till today okay in the same way you can see cotton decreased increase decrease increase so cotton has increased decrease increased decrease paddy has continuously shown what increase paddy has continuously shown increase okay fine then 
we also have percentage of grass zone area under yasangi that is nothing but in rabi season in rabi season five major crops of telangana are paddy maize groundnut red bengal gram sesame these five crops are contributing around 92% of sown area in telangana in rabi season so it means in rabi season these five crops are majorly grown by farmers and if you see in the rabi season paddy is accounting 74 76% means out of these five crops the farmers are growing highest what paddy followed again by we are having maize then you can see here bengal gram then you can see here this is groundnut this is sesame remember the chronology very very important remember that all the five crops are contributing how much uh, sown area in yasangi period 92.3% and you can see that paddy cultivation increase decrease increase increase then decrease so increase decrease increase decrease here 49 14.9 14.7 14.2 10 9 again increase decrease so here in paddy in yasangi season paddy and maize both neither have steadily increase nor have steadily decrease they increase decrease increase decrease increase decrease increase decrease got it yes now let us see it in a very proper manner again Grass zone area has significantly increased in our Telangana in 2014. The grass zone area stood at 131 lakh acres only, but in 2020 to 2021 it increased to 210 lakh acres. This will be asked in the examination. Paddy, cotton, maize, red gram constitute nearly 85 percent of total cultivation in throughout the year. Okay, cultivated area under paddy 50 percent, cotton 28 percent, constitute 78 percent. It means in all the seasons. Paddy and cotton together accounts for 78% of uh, cultivatable area. Paddy area was just around uh, 35 lakh acres in 2014 to 15. Okay, now it increased to how much? 104 lakh acres means paddy area has also increased. 2014 it was 35 lakh area was under paddy increased to 104 lakh areas. Okay, in 2021 it means 197% growth rate happened in paddy area in the same way cotton cultivation also increased by 38 percent from 42 lakh acres to 58 lakh acres in the same 2014 to 2021 okay decline you can see maize has declined 12.5 percent in 2014 to 15 and decreased drastically okay by 2020 to 2021 1.5 percent only now percentage increase in grass zone area if you see which district has grown Okay, is a change from 2014 to 2021. Okay, which district has shown maximum increase in gross shown area? Medak. Medak added 57% change in gross, uh, gross shown area followed by Vikarabad. First two are important. Least is Nirmal, instead of increasing their shown area, they actually decrease their shown area. Negative means before they were having 100 lakh acres, now they were having only 89. So, we, Nirmal has got negative growth rate with regard to gross zone area uh, followed by Komaram Bhim. The first and second is Medak and Vikarabad which has added highest percentage of gross zone area change in this period. If you take the state average that is 13.7 lakh acres, please remember this point. Okay, now you see the cropping intensity. What is cropping intensity is nothing but Okay, the ratio of gross cropped area to the net cropped area, this is already, it, you might have learned in the agriculture chapter of your Telangana economy for sure. So, what is given in the survey, it is there here. Okay, so I will not go into the detail of cropping intensity and how a cropping intensity is one of the indicator of productivity and efficiency of the agriculture land holding or agriculture sector. I will not go into the conceptual thing because that is anyhow you have learned, I am assuming it. Okay. Now, to measure the cropping intensity, a index has been prepared. That index is called as, okay, cropping intensity index. With a, and in that in index, we got 136, okay. Our value is what, 136. It means the state has an opportunity in improving cropping intensity by utilizing technology. And we have also improved our gross, okay, agricultural practices. Cropping, district level cropping intensity index. So, they will ask you which district is having highest cropping intensity index. Okay, the more the index, the, the above one number, okay, generally it is uh, 0 to 1. 
Above one is always better, best, best, best. Less than one is what? Worse, worse, worse. Okay. Now you see that in cropping intensity. Okay. Cropping intensity index on an average ranging from what? Okay. 106 to 178. So you see here Nizambad is 178 and you don't see any other. Okay. Uh, like uh, we don't have any other uh, uh, district which is having 178. So the district which is having highest cropping intensity index if this question comes your answer is nizamabad like that you can find the least one here and you can answer okay production of major crops very very important please stay tuned and focus it cropping area overall increase in telangana by 52 percent okay so then when cropping area increase automatically production will increase that is what happened so 2014 to 15 our agricultural production was 232 lakh tons metric tons in 2021 it became 353 so 232 became 353 okay so almost like 50 percent 52 percent cropping area increase this increase has added this much production the three major crops of telangana given in the economic survey are paddy cotton maize they constitute 75 percent of total produce before that whatever we have seen now that is the crops which are majorly grown now here we are seeing that the out of the total crop production which three crops are there which are adding to large production so it may also happen the area could be small but maize can give 100 tons okay rice can give the area could be like 10 like bigger than this area but rice could be about 50 tons right or wrong so sowing area is different production is different here we are talking about what produce okay paddy cotton and maize is when all the crops are produced when we have weighted all the crops, we understood that 75% of total produce is of what? Paddy, cotton and maize. Okay. If you see paddy performance from 1516 to 2021, paddy area increased from 25 lakh hectares okay, to 104 lakh hectares in this, uh, uh, in this period. And uh, this is this increases around 303% 3, 3, means 25 became what? 2 times 25 to the 50, 3 times or it will become what? 75 like that so you can understand that almost the paddy area increased by 303 percent when area increase production should increase or not yes so in the same period in 2015 uh, paddy production was 45 lakh tons by 2021 paddy production was 218.5 2, 2, lakh tons this is not there okay in percentage paddy production increased by 378 percent okay 45 became 218 it comes to 375 okay 25 became 104 it comes to 303 please remember this okay now telangana produces 6 percent of total rice produced in india when you see the cotton in cotton in the same period telangana produces around 19 percent of india's cotton in india cotton area also increased 43 lakh cuts in 2015-16 became 58 lakh, lakh acres 2021 so cotton area size increase of 33 percent cotton production was around 18 lakh tons only in 2015 to 16 increased to 30.4 lakh tons in 2021 so area also increased from 43 to 58 production also increased from 18 to 34 this increase in lakh acres this increase in area is 33 percent increase in production is 61 percent according to agriculture ministry Statistics of 2020, Telangana stands at second for the cotton production within, in our country. When you see the pulses, Telangana ranks 10th in the production of pulses according to the Agriculture Ministry statistics. Growth rate of production of pulses between 2018-19 and 19-20. Okay, when you see the pulses production in this year only, Telangana stands 4th at the national level. Overall in production 10th. Okay, but in this year, if you see the production has gone little bit very good. That's why in this year, our pulses production okay, was so good that we stood at fourth in these years. As compared to the national growth rate of 4.3%, Telangana recorded growth rate of 20.49% in these years. So in these years, India grown by India's average pulses production increased by 4.3%, whereas Telangana growth rate by 20.49%. If you see the maize in Telangana occupies third position in maize production. Production and uh, you can in the lakh tons you can see 17.55 lakh million tons in 2020 to 21 that much of maize we have produced. And third we are in the 
maize production. So if you see the total agriculture production from Telangana, total agriculture production 20, 231, 188, 210, 234, 234, 339, 3. So in the last, you can see the last three years, agriculture production overall in lakh metric tons have increased. Okay, so you should remember that last three years increased, but from the time of state formation till today, till 2022, increase, decrease, increase, decrease happened. So agriculture production did not steadily increase from 2014 to till 2021, not steadily increase because increase, decrease is there. But from the last three years, it steadily increased. And you should also remember the uh, 2021, what is the agriculture production? 353.33 lakh metric ton is the agriculture production. Now, if you see the agriculture yield of Telangana, okay, yield means kg per acre quantity okay, or weight by acre. So, you might be, uh, you might have learned this in uh, your agriculture chapter. Highest agriculture yield is of maize. Maize, okay, in one acre use as 2,744 kg. Paddy use only 2,096 kg. And third is cotton. I have not written that uh, kg because only first two are important. Just remember that the crop that gives highest agriculture yield is maize followed by paddy. If they ask you what is the yield of maize, okay, with respect to, agri what is the agriculture yield of maize, if they ask you, 2,744 kg, paddy is 2,096. If you see the fertilizer consumption in our Telangana, fertilizer consumption also increased. Fertilizer, which fertilizers to be used will be decided on the basis of what crops you are actually cultivating, what is the cropping intensity that you are following, what is the soil type, what is its condition, agroclimatic conditions, the ability to purchase farmer, irrigation is available or not. On all these factors, okay, fertilizers are chosen. The consumption of fertilizers also increased in our state. Okay, it was only 28 lakh million ton in 2018. It became 39 lakh million ton in 2020. More fertilizer means you can understand more area has gone into agriculture. Okay, that's because more irrigation in from Mission Kagatya, more irrigation, more agriculture area, more agriculture area means more fertilizer. This could be one situation or existing uh, farmers are using what? More fertilizers. So whenever you use more fertilizer, common thing you will get. Okay, intensive fertilization. Nothing results in what? Increase in production in the same area. Mahibubabad and Siddhi Pet have seen exponential growth with regard to the consumption of uh, fertilizer 100% more than means they were using only 100 kg. Now they are using 200 kg like that. You can understand. Okay. Mitchell Markajgiri and Varangal Urban. Okay. They instead of increasing or being in the same place, they actually got decreased. They got in minus. Minus. Okay. So, fertilizer, uh, fertilizer consumption decreased negative in Mitchell, Malakajgiri and Varangal, whether it has increased exponentially in Mehubabad and Siddhi Pet. If you see the horticulture sector of our Telangana, in 2021, area under horticulture okay, was 11.57 lakh acres and horticulture production is 59.03 lakh metric tons in this year. Okay. And... Uh, in the, the in the total agriculture area of Telangana, horticulture is contributing 5.39 percentage. So 5.39 percent of total agriculture area is occupied by horticulture sector. The sector contribute 26 percent in terms of value of produce. In terms of value of produce, because horticulture is all about fruits. One uh, like uh, one dozen of apple, one kilo of apple will be like 200 rupees but 1 kilo of K rice will be 45 kg only right so in terms of value okay agriculture crops will not give that much of value but horticulture are given what more value because they are also called as what cash crops this is a very common thing that you might have learned in your okay survey i mean sorry in your uh, lectures fine between 2015 to till today area under horticulture has also grown 304 percent very very good Okay, mango, sweet orange. I don't know that. I never had an orange which is sweet. Okay, this is misnomer actually. Mango, even mango also nowadays are not getting sweet. So, next time our children will say that, sorry dad, sorry mama, mango is not sweet. Okay, mango, sweet orange, acid lime, guava, pomegranate, tomato, brinjal, cashew nut, oil palm, chili, turmeric are the major horticulture crops in the state. 
Telangana ranks 8th in terms of production of fruits in the country and ranks in first in terms of food in terms of what turmeric. Okay. And if you see the production of uh, in horticulture crops, within horticulture crops, the highest production is coming from fruits. Fruits are produced highest in horticulture followed by vegetables. Then you have got spices. Please remember the chronology. Fruits within horticulture, highest production is coming from fruits. Then followed by vegetables, then spices. If you see the animal husbandry, okay, means our livestock sector, this sector is contributing around 46% of gross value added to agriculture sector. The sector is playing very good role, okay, to supplement family incomes because you know that India follows and Telangana follows mixed farming, but the farmer along with the growing crops, he also maintains what livestock like goats, buffaloes, uh, cows, he will, okay, uh, do the uh, taming also, right. So that's why along with this crop, it will add little bit of income to them. That's why this sector is sub giving supplementary income. Primary occupation of the farmer is cultivation. The secondary occupation will be what? This particular animal husbandry. That's why India is having, India and Telangana mixed farming. You might have learned in your static. Employment opportunities, it will create animal husbandry sector, will create employment opportunity in rural sector because dud nikalna, dud ka transportation, etc. It is important sector for overall growth of area. Landless, small and margin farmers are majorly dependent apart from cropping, apart from doing agriculture, they generally also do what? Animal husbandry because chote chote lands are very very small lands so unlo china crops vala ko saripo first subsistence farming vala tintaru half half vala amtaru art dabbulu vala health ki education ki vala development ki pani ki raadu and the animal husbandry kuda cheyal se vasthadi so landless small margin farmers are majorly dependent on animal husbandry and animal husbandry sufficient supply of animals are there meat and also milk will give us what good amount of protein and in our Telangana on livestock for 29 lakh families are dependent and it is becoming one of the major sector for rural and semi-urban areas. Livestock population in Telangana has increased in 2012. The livestock cow, buffaloes, goat, sheep, etc, pigs, etc, all of them, the living livestock means what? Live means living, living stock of animals. Okay, it was around 26.7 million in 2012, but it became how much? 32.6 million okay in 2019 so from 2012 to 2019 livestock population increased by 22.09 percent among the major states in telangana in india telangana is second to west bengal with respect to the livestock population okay then the change in the livestock population telangana ranks first in sheep production telangana has seen an increase of 48.51 percent in sheep production sheep population as per 2019 to 20, milk and meat almost cover in whatever we derive from animals, milk and meat cover 76% of the value. Means if all the animals, whatever the commercial value of animals is there, if 100 crore rupees are coming from animal husbandry, 76 crores are coming only from what? Milk and meat. Okay. Trends in livestock sector, you can see that livestock sector is jumping, jumping, jumping in our Telangana. Okay, so steadily increase, you can write 36 became 42, 42, 49, 58, 66, 80. So you can see a big jump happened in the last three years. The livestock sector is growing. Okay, livestock sector is in terms of values 1, okay, lakh 4,000 crore. Okay, if you see the, that is agriculture and allied horticulture animal husbandry, which is mentioned in our economic survey, that is over. Agriculture's credit, if you see, okay. So, generally what happens, you know, uh, every year the SBI bank, this Andhra bank, all these public sector bank will, uh, their chairmen and uh, CMDs, executive directors, they will meet with the CM, KCR, Harishra, etc. And all of them will together take a decision that, okay, this much money should be given to agriculture, this much money should be given to uh, allied activities, this much money should be given to industry sector promotion like that. So, this is called as this meeting every year it will be held. And this meeting is called a state level bankers committee meet. Okay. So this committee has told that they have targeted like 2021 to 2022. All this, the, the, the committee has actually fixed 91,541 crores will be disbursed. In this 91,000 crores, 75,977 crores were given to, given as a crop loans. 32,000 will be given as agriculture term loans to farmer and other allied activities. 
okay that is what they 2014 they have given only 41000 crore rupees were given uh, were actually targeted by 2021 it increased to 79 so it is very very huge very very huge we are doing very very well okay debt waiver you can understand that debt waivers are nothing but wave wave means tata loans those agriculture farmers who have taken the loans loans they have to say tata to the loan they have to wave their hand this is only called as what debt waiver means jojo bhi udhare unko chuti dena okay this scheme was first launched in 2014 to 15 okay those who have taken okay up to 1 lakh rupees will be what waived means will be written off means you don't need to pay and this scheme is applicable to all crop loans and also agriculture gold loans so agriculture farmer wives might have given gold and uh, to the banks and uh, banks uh, gave them gold loans so gold loans and as crop loans and as 1 lakh paraku maaf ches sir ani maata 2014 lo idhi start in the malli uh, second round kuda in the 2014 15 16 17 okay around six and uh, uh, every year it is implemented okay 16,124 crore rupees has been spent on this particular waiver scheme 35 lakh farmers got benefited okay right Okay, in 2021 also government of Telangana said that again 1 lakh rupee will be waived. Mere maaf kar do bhai. Okay, fine. Then you can see right to Bandhu and right to Bhima scheme. Very beautiful schemes we are having here. Okay, fine. Right to Bandhu scheme launched on May 2018. You know that. Number of farmers benefited, 49 lakh farmers are benefited, 5,000 rupees per season. Kharif season, 5,000. Rabi season, again 5,000. So, every farmer will get 10,000 per acre. Means, if you are having 20 acre, you will get 2 lakhs. How nice it is, no? Yes. Okay. So, right to per crop, per acre, per acre, 10,000 will be given. F sorry, per acre, uh, 5,000 will be given. Okay. Per crop, for farmers right in a one season two season generally it will become what 10000 okay right to bima launched after this particular bandhu bandhu was launched in may bima was launched in august year is same 18 18 basically nothing but the insurance family insurance scheme life insurance scheme to the farmer if the farmer the head farmer has died their family will get 5 lakh rupees that's all their family will get 5 lakh rupees then if you see the seed Seed. See, a lot of farmers are getting what defective seed, low quality seed. Nothing but here you have put a seed, here you have put a seed, here you have put a seed, here you have put a seed. This seed has given what 10 grains. This seed has given what 8 grains. This seed has given only 2. This seed has given 10. These seeds are provided by home companies. Companies are giving what low quality seeds. That's why farmers are getting good production than bad production. So, in this area, in their area, good and bad production is happening because of the low quality of seeds all these concepts you might have learned in your uh, lectures that's why i am not going into the detail of it but this is how the seed quality makes difference in the production suppose all the seeds are very good means all uh, the grains will be more and more weight will come and the farmers income will increase or not yes in order to make sure that the grains are having quality quality telangana government has established telangana oil seed testing authority this authority is nothing but they will give a stamping to the seed manufacturing company so if you see the stamp no you have to be like okay this seed is good quality seed that is what we have done and our seed quality uh, with the help of our uh, the so good our soil test uh, sorry seed testing thing we are doing that we are now even um, our seeds are even uh, exported to other countries okay and uh, for seed quality testing, international certificate is always also given that is called as orange certificate. This certificate that is orange certificate is given for international seed quality testing purpose. Orange certificate is given. Okay, and it is given by OSED, Organization of Cooperation Economic Development. They have given it. Telangana state government want to make Telangana as a global seed hub. Means globe. In Australia, if any, any farmer wants seed, Telangana will supply. In Japan, if any farmer one seed telangana will supply so we want to become a hub of what seed manufacturing that's why government of telangana has uh, has put on a uh, 27 state of art seed processing plant and already we are considering constructing many others seed subsidy is also given to the farmers okay uh, if 100 rupees seeds are there 100 gram seeds you will get in 200 rupees means 
uh, this you don't have to pay 200 rupees, you have to pay only 100 rupees. So, seed bag subsidy is also given. Seed village scheme is also given where in a particular village all types of seeds of all variety will be produced so that the farmers can get the seed at the cheaper rate. Okay, we want to even become a global seed hub and also what seed bowl of the country means we are having a seed bowl. If uh, Gujarat farmer want seed of maize from our bowl, they can take it means we should be a hub of seed manufacturing from abroad and also from the country. Anyone want seed? No, come to us. We are having a full bowl is there. Take how much you want. Okay, National Seed Corporation and Enactment of India Seeds Act 1966 is also running. Telangana State Seed and Organic Certification Authority, I told you around about this. It towards maintain the quality and also what? Issue certificates and also availability. Telangana is the first country in the state, in the first state in the country to export seeds to Sudan and Egypt. And Telangana has also got orange certificate which is given by Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. In 2020 to 21, 1.5 lakh acres are registered under this particular authority and that particular area, whatever the seeds are coming, no, that seeds are given what certification by this authority. Then 24 into 7 power supply to the farm sector. See, government of Telangana was successful in giving 9 hours of power supply uh, by 2016. Then government of Telangana said that 9 hours is not sufficient, let us give 24 hours. So, we have got an ambitious plan to supply 24 hours power to the agriculture sector. So, this was first started as a pilot project in the district of Medan, Nalgonda and Karimnagar. Telangana started 24 hours of power supply in these districts and we became successful by 2017. 2016, 9 hours. 2017, 24 hours but only in 3 districts. Okay, later on what has happened, Telangana has achieved a new record to provide a free, free power to 24 hours to all the agriculture sector by 2018. All the agriculture bore wells, wherever agriculture bore wells, pump sets are there, Telangana by 2018 was able to supply power to all that uh, agriculture areas which are having what bore wells. Telangana has become the only state in the country to achieve this rare distinction to supply power free of cost to all the bore and pump sets of agriculture sector. About 40% of power supplied in the state is going towards agriculture. So, whatever Telangana state, TS Genco is producing, 40% is going to the uh, agriculture sector. 6.3 lakh new agriculture connections were also given. And government has incurred an expenditure of in the free power supply. 39,000 crore rupees were paid by Telangana government to TS Genco. Telangana at all India level, Telangana consumes highest percentage of electricity for agriculture purpose. Okay. So, around 41%. Around 41. Here 40 is written. 40, 41. No difference is there. Here round figure they have done. But here exactly they have written. 41% of state electricity is going to agriculture sector which is highest in our country okay crop diversification import importance is very very well known as you might have learned in your static okay in your subject academics only crop diversification is nothing but in kharif season okay if i am going growing like paddy cotton for two three years then after two three years i have to grow what maize and wheat like that this is called a change in the crops in the same area is called as what crop diversification and you should go towards this so for this purpose also index of cross, the crop diversification is also there. This index again ranges from 0 to 1. Higher the value means the area is having got higher crop diversification. Crop diversification will help. What is the main advantages of crop diversification means it will help to again you regain fertility, store the fertility again and again because you are going for different different crops. So sustainable agriculture growth you will get. And farmer will become more resilient to fluctuating prices also because if they all of you and me, if everyone is growing paddy, 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 what will happen? The supply will increase and the prices will go down. That's why if some people go for crop diversification, the supply will be normal and the farmers can get what remunerative prices. The link of uh, how agriculture prices will operate in the market, you might have learned in your MSP and state administrative prices and FRP. We are having three kind of price regulations are there. MSP, FRP and state administrative prices, you might have learned all of this. On the basis of this, I am telling you this one. Okay. And crop diversification will also help to increase what farm income because the 
fertility increases and you will get what good production quality also okay government of telangana is recommending groundnut sunflower sesame and bengal gram black gram green gram castor mustard kusuma oil palm jenjowar should be actually grown and should be rotated in our telangana because our soil suits these uh, crops a lot nirmal vikarabad sangareddy is having highest crop diversification it means these areas are growing different different crops over a period of time pedapalli karimnagar surya pet these guys are not at all interested in crop crop diversification very mundi farmers are there they are like nahi hum yahi crop grow karenge hamesha we will not go for crop diversification who is telling this pedapalli karimnagar surya pet farmers are telling this oil palm very important for the group 1 mains examination group 2 is anyhow important why because all palm direct question may come oil palm plantation is now actually covered in three districts actually a national oil palm mission program is running under this okay telangana government is getting money to promote oil palm so we started this particular oil palm mission in only three districts badradi kottagudam khammam suryapet the highest oil palm plantation or production is coming from badradi kottagudam followed by what khammam okay so here it is also important oil palm produces 10 to 46 time more oil per hectare compared to other oil seed crops so that is very very important that it has enormous potential for cultivation and also to increase our income telangana stands sixth in terms of oil palm area means uh, area in terms of area we are standing sixth okay and first in oil extraction rate means at every day or every month we generally extract more oil and we'll supply more oil the state production of crude palm oil is around 0.45 lakh okay metric tons against the requirement of 3.66 so we are very very short we are just doing 0.45 extraction but we require this much it means the gap is being uh, what uh, uh, imported from other states so we are having good amount of potential because within the state only we are having 3.6 lakh metric tons demand of oil seed is there but we are producing only this much okay government of telangana seeing that gap only asking the farmers to promote what to cultivate what oil palm in their seeds in their farmery in their area the major objective of uh, so government of telangana has giving giving a subsidies to the farmer to go for oil palm cultivation and government of telangana has put a target of uh, actually cultivating the oil palm to a tune of 20 lakh acres okay that is the ultimate objective so 2022 to 2023 uh, 2022 to 2023 uh, government of telangana has targeted 1 lakh acre 1 lakh hectare okay that will become what 2.5 lakh acres so in this year in this 2022 to 2023 government is targeting that in our telangana 2.5 lakh acres uh, should be what oil palm ultimate target is what 20 lakh acres and this scheme is implemented only in 26 districts government of telangana in order to improve in order to promote the oil palm production is also giving subsidy okay for the farmers who are interested to grow oil palm so 26000 per acre in raitu bandhu only 5000 was given per acre per crop here 26000 per acre to oil palm farmers in the first year 5000 per acre each in the second third and fourth year as a crop investment incentive scheme and also the farmers who are going for this particular oil palm cultivation can avail assistance on micro drip irrigation system 23000 rupees will be given per hectare to establish that okay sprinkler or drip irrigation system in your agriculture area so a good amount of push is given for what oil palm cultivation okay so this is a very gk uh, question for you okay committee on doubling the farmer income appointed by the government of telangana is by Ash dr ashok dalwai this could be asked in the examination that which one of the following is uh, which one of the following who among the following has chaired uh, chaired the uh, committee on uh, doubling of farmer income so ashok dalwai is the person who has actually uh, chaired the meeting of doubling the farmer's income thanks a lot for being to me have a nice day bye take care